Welcome back. Hello. It's been a long time. It's been so long that we're just we're doing season three. We shouldn't have left you without uh, a podcast time, to step to. Well, time happens, you know. But uh, season three, that's where we're at now. Season three. What do, do we have a number thing? You always have something about the numbers. Well, three, one. Three plus one is four. Four divided is one, 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 which is like a path number. They say whenever you look at the clock, I think we've talked about this before, and it's 11, 11. It means that time is you coinciding with reality. About the 11, 11 on one of these number interests. I know, so it must be meant to be. That's my thing, man. I don't know. What else do you, what do you got for 31? Well, it's just, I don't fucking know. 3, 1. It just feels right. Season 3. I like it. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, it's hard to find where this is in the equation of things when it comes to numbers. Yeah. I, I guess mean, that's the problem here. I mean, it, it's hard to decide if it's, yeah, I don't know what to say. You kind of <laughs> said it. But what we're talking about I today. Didn't say very much. We're going to see how much we can elaborate on the Mandelbrot set. It's interesting stuff. You've probably seen this shit at like Spencer's Gifts. Remember those uh, posters back in the day? Yeah. Those like glowing ass posters. Where like you those, get a black those, light? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Well, that's, how you, that's how it glows, the black light. So it was created by Benoit Mandelbrot. It was discovered. 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 He, didn't he, he brought it to the world. He, he, he found it. Before my boy Benoit, it wasn't a thing. Well, you know kind of. I mean? Well, because they used to have equations. That's what made him remember it. Because he, he was hired to do an equation for somebody. And the equation itself reminded him of when he was a child. Because he's always been into math. And they used to be called monsters. Because they were weird shapes that were developed by math design, uh, by math equations. But that was just, just kind of it. it. They always looked like weird little figures. But they were very primitive and basic. Unlike the, the Mandelbrot set. But when he started doing that equation, it reminded him of that, how math equations become diagrams, so to say, or pictures. It's interesting. Super interesting. Yeah, so uh, just real quick, how the Mandelbrot set works. And of course, I have this memorized, but I don't want to miss totally. anything. So totally. I'm just going to say it. It's an iteration, meaning it repeats, right? And it's generated by what is called an iteration. I already said that. It repeated I'm already. I'm loving this explanation. <laughs> It, it repeat the word repeat is going to come up a lot. It repeats a process over and over again in mathematics. The process is most often the application of a math. It just sounds complicated. But really, it sounds complicated. It's an equation that basically, if you put on a graph, uh, some numbers work, some numbers don't. And what got me into it? Let's just get there. An introduction to why it's even fascinating to me, right? So I was looking up videos as I often do about trippy shit. I like to watch things that trip me out. And the Mandelbrot set, you've probably seen it. If you've ever, uh, a lot of, like, let's say a festival, they have visuals going on in the background. Yeah, he's going to give you a live. Like it looks like that. It's a little bit like but, that. That's what it looks like, not a little bit. But if you zoom into it, basically you see that shape repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. There are other, uh, there are other versions of this. Like there was a triangle one. I forgot the guy's name on that, but it's a triangle. And then on the triangle, you put another triangle. And then another triangle and another triangle. So there's triangles on each end. And then on that triangle, you put another little triangle, and it just keeps going. So from our dimension, all we're seeing is the triangle with the little triangles on the side. But the more you zoom in, every triangle has little triangles on it. It's called, like, the triangle thing. Lo and behold. <laughs> Lo and behold, dude. I'm all, the triangle thing. It's something like that. If you take it sounds complicated to be called it. just the triangle thing. Yeah, you know? It adds to it. But then there's, there's, there's a few with shapes, basically. That's not the only shape that they used. That's one of the main ones. And this is kind of in the same, I don't know, branch of these uh, equations that become an endless thing. The more you zoom in, it never ends. In fact, uh, if you blew up that Mandelbrot thing, Mandel, yeah, I said it right. Mandelbrot. You said it right. If you zoom in and you made it the size of the universe, it still would just be as detailed, no matter how much they've blown it up. Some crazy stuff. Super crazy stuff. And what I liked most about it when I was watching this, because I have seen this, this visual numerous times, and it reminded me heavily of a psychedelic experience. Right. So if you've ever they're called fractals, if you've ever done a psychedelic, you close your eyes, even with your eyes open. Sometimes you see these shapes, geometrical patterns, things of that nature. And they're very hard to explain, you know, like explaining a psychedelic experience to somebody is like trying to speak a language that no one speaks and, and getting a point across. It's very difficult. And I thought, wow, I'm seeing something that I could actually research that describes these visuals. And one thing that I I know is that math is one of the things that we didn't create, we discovered. 
Yeah, it's the universe of the language. Everyone can understand it with zeros and ones. So my whole thing was this is a mathematical equation that gives a little bit of sense to these visuals. And I think math is, well, you said it, it's the universe language. Yeah. Right. So my thought is, I think, in, and when you look at this thing that goes into infinity, I guess in my head, I felt like, I don't know what happens after we die. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you assume I know, but I don't. I did not make that assumption. Some people look at me like a guy that would know. I don't know. But one of my experiences that I had led me to believe that it kind of is just an infinite visual. And then you become at peace with it. And then you explore universal things and whatnot. But I kind of feel like the Mandelbrot effect is a good representation of that. I think if you watch these videos, they can go on for like 10 minutes. And they just infinitely zoom in yeah, on they're, the Mandelbrot. They're pretty, and it's pretty intense. Stellar. And for, for a second there, you get like a little bit of anxiety. It's like... You, it's not, not that you want it to end, but is it ever going to end? It, it doesn't. It doesn't. Mathematically, it, it's forever. So well, if, as we should explain what, what it is, is if you have a number line and let's say zero is in the middle and you could go one, two, three, four and, and so on. And you would go negative one, two, three, all the negatives. So that's that's your plane of numbers. How we find the Mandelbrot set is there's also, okay, for example, if these are the rational numbers you need to get complicated numbers and irrational numbers and the way you do that is let's say you could have the square root of nine or something which is three but if you wanted to do the square root of negative dude, you one, thought of that real quick bro you're like a mathematician dude square root of nine dude but 16 what Six. four <sighs> oh i'm never gonna i would say do another one but i'm not pushing my leg dude i'm never gonna question not your gonna push <laughs> well anyway so negative one you could not get a square root of that that doesn't that's not a real thing so you what mathematicians will do is they'll have this so this is the number plane they'll have another plane this way the and x and the that, y well yeah they use different numbers i've seen i for imaginary so you have one i two i and so forth it could be anything it's just a way to complete the math equation with real numbers that wouldn't exist because sometimes i don't know i'm not a mathematician this stuff is like way above me it's very fooled interesting me shit. bro you fooled me but so if you have this plane and this plane and you start mapping out numbers that can work and can't work, the ones that, in that diagram that I showed you, the, the black empty space, anything that's in there are Works. the numbers that uh, that are in the Mandelbot set because they just stay small. And the rest are finite, and that's where the color comes from. And that math pattern is what gives us that endless uh, design. It's very interesting that a math equation in general would give us a pattern or a design, especially something that beautiful if you look these up, they're crazy. Well, I guess if you think about it, any kind of pattern is mathematical. Yeah, that makes sense to me. That wasn't a very profound thought, but it felt like one when I had it. You know? I thought it, it was, needed to be said. It needed to be it said. Needed to be There's said. people out there that don't get it, like us. You know what I mean? <laughs> like like us mathematicians. We need to layman it out a little bit. So yeah, patterns come from math, you know. Just throw it there. But when you're watching these videos, it seems like it's never going to end, and it really won't. It'll just keep zooming. Well, the videos zooming. are only so long. Yeah, well, I've it, seen 10-hour ones. Oh, shit. The longest I saw was 17. And I didn't watch it for 10 hours, but I know where it's going. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's going to keep on, I, it's gonna keep on going, dude. I don't got to get in water to know it's wet. You know what I mean? It lasted forever. But there's some calming effect to when you watch this. And at first, you get that anxiety, like, oh, when the hell is it going to end? And it switches up on you, and it trips you out. But then you just kind of subdue to it. And you're kind of like, yeah, I could be here. What's crazy is to find the Mandelbrot set, all you need to do is add and multiply. You don't need to subtract, no dividing. To get this, this set of numbers, you don't have to do anything complicated. The problem is, is the amount of math it takes. You must do, just like a computer can do so many computations per second, you know, like in the millions and billions. You have to do this past a couple million, hundreds of millions or something like that, just to even start getting that pattern. So it's something that could have been done for all of time. But... We couldn't have done it until we had the computers because of the amount of computations it needs. Yeah, because if you Isn't think about it, it's very interesting. Isn't that interesting? Like, if you think about this wall behind us, if there was a black circle on here, one dot represents one equation. So to get that full circle that's completely black, that have to alone be hundreds of thousands, right? Oh, that alone. That is yeah, crazy. That was, that was well said. I'm just here to make things palatable. You know, I'm not like you. I don't have all these... Palatable crazy explanations in my head the dot on the wall <laughs> dot on the wall dot we're all just wall. dots on the wall dude it's crazy though that stuff is crazy it kind of is metaphorical for people you know i'm listening just one of us is a dot but when we gather together we become this mandelbrot equation set, set. 
and it's infinite. Whoa. Well, up to about 9 billion. Is there 9 billion people in the world right now? Oh, yeah. Shit, we talked about this, too. It's like 6.75 or some shit like that. That's a big difference. It's a huge difference. I mean, I wonder, I, I, I'm i sure yeah, we can find this out, but I wonder how many people there were like 10 years ago. How fast are we growing as people? Shit, uh, in like the 80s or the 90s, there was a statistic that all the people, as many people, are, I'm, I'm going to say this wrong, as many people as are alive today existed throughout all of time. Because there were so few people and, they, you know, you multiply and so forth and so on. So the amount of people that were on Earth, it, when the statistic came out in like the 90s or the 80s, the amount of people on that planet added up to the amount of people who ever lived on this planet. I don't know now. That was like fucking, that's like a 20, 30 year old statistic. I mean, I wonder how many people there were then. Three billion maybe? I'm, I'm sure. We it's a random it guess. Who knows? Uh, four? Yeah, something like that. I'm going to go with four. That sounds right. So Ben Way... Benoit. Benoit Mandelbrot. Dude got a name on him. You know what I mean? It's a cool name. It like, sounds like uh, he makes cologne or some shit. Like, like, there's some fancy ties. Albert Einstein. You know? like uh, Benoit, that's, that's slick. Albert? I think Albert? you could same. probably judge how good at math somebody is based off their name. You know? Jared My Yaw. name's Jared Yaw. <laughs> that, that ain't saying much for math. Yeah, I'm not going to get too far with it. You know what I'm saying? It, it's cool, though, watching... Because, what you know, you go down the rabbit hole of YouTube and shit, and I started watching more and more videos on this stuff, and then I just started watching people do, like, math equations that are, like, far beyond... Like, binomials, if you know what that shit is. Like, it's just so fucking far beyond. And I'm watching this, and I just want to know what the fuck they're talking about. And they're just like, oh, yeah, of course this means that. And, and then you start watching more videos. It's crazy the type of videos you see when you look up Mandelbrot. Dude, uh, I always think I'm good at math. Like, you know, one thing that I like to do is, let's say I'm getting gas. You know what I mean? At a gas station. And I buy a water. And the water is $1.09. And I give them 40 bucks. And I'm like, I want the rest on number three. And before they even do, 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 get their computers out, calculate the calculate the number, I'm already like thirty eight ninety one. I do that at the grocery store. And it, I feel like a math genius when I do that. But then well, when I do you get the result or do you just feel like a math genius for trying your best? A lot of people will say, wow, you're good at math. <laughs> it's a common response. Like, whoa. OK. I mean, when the, okay. I gave a pretty basic one. But okay. when you it's like, you know, thirty nine, forty seven. They're like, whoa, dude. Like, like you're genius. A lot I don't of, advertise you know what I mean? I try it at the supermarket. Sometimes I'm right. Sometimes I'm wrong. I think most people do comments. Comment. Yeah, comment. Do you do, you do that shit? Yeah, but with when it comes to math, I thought I was a prodigy. I thought I was like a Did savant you? with math. When I was younger, yeah. You know? okay, okay. Why not? I was like, math is my thing. That's what's up. Like, I used to have a bunch of quarters in my pocket, and I will count it all day. That was like, when I was younger, I'd always be jiggling change in my pocket. Nothing really to do with Damn, math. That's that's dancing on the line. <laughs> you know what I mean? I would be I would basically your prom quarters? promoting my wealth. <laughs> you, know what, you know what I'm saying? I had a neighbor that uh, I would take dollar bills over to his house, and he would swap me out for quarters. You that's know? what's up. So I don't know. I had pogs. Dude. Did you have pogs? Pog story. Pog story one? alert. Yeah, man. One? I got a, a rough patch in my life, actually, when it comes to pogs. Brought up pogs and we got a rush. Okay. I yeah. think pogs, first of all, I would be down to bring pogs back. I, think I bet you they're, if it we does, went on Amazon, they got to be there. It I'm promotes sure gambling. Buy, I'm sure you could buy pogs. A little bit. It promotes gambling. Remember, they, they came, I remember I got Del Taco when I was like a super little kid and the pogs were the, the toy. How do you define super little kid? What is like the age range for a yeah, super little kid? I don't know. Kid? Like, what is that? Five? It's a super little kid. Okay. I was worried. I was like, damn, I'm getting called out on this. I, did, I think little, five. It's a lot what of, you it? know, a little kid would be like eight. <laughs> a super no, little that's kid. A kid. No, that's a kid. I think okay. if you're eight, you're a kid. This fucking kid. He's eight. <laughs> yeah. In Boston, they call each other kid. Yeah, no, I got that. They're like 30. What's man. up, kid? What's, What's up, kid? What's up, son? East like Coast, it. they got some cool stuff. I like. I love slang. Ain't no one calling each other dad though. What's up, pops? That's true. People do use pops. So when it comes to pogs, so so what I was gonna get at. Let me finish the math thing We're still first. Don't, wait, math then pogs. You, you know had what I mean? more. Well, yeah, okay. I had a little okay. bit. I didn't even get to what I was trying to say about the math because I bad. got super caught up in my neighbor that probably ripped me off in change. You know what I'm saying? Probably. He was well, a good know. dude. Who knows? Well, but okay, I was just saying. Why is he? Why is he ripping you off if you think he's a good dude? Did he do something once? I don't know, man. I don't remember much of my childhood, dude. But this, his dark. You have 
This you have? The Pogs? This I... Okay. I remember... Well, math first, then Pogs. Pogs yeah, is vivid. I actually, it's a fun story. So when it comes to math, though, I thought I was like a genius, dude. I was like acing all my tests. When it comes to add, subtract, multiply, divide, I totally got it. Then when it came time to high school, 10th grade came along and geometry happened. And they started doing shapes, letters. And my mind was like, what the fuck is this, dude? I straight got a D. And... uh I went to like my, my, my counselor who was trying to help me out. They're like, look, you don't really need to take geometry, but I highly recommend you just take an elective, maybe art instead of math, uh, so you don't fail. Because I said, should I retake it? He's like, probably not. Okay. He, had, he didn't have a lot of faith in my geometry skills. So up until the 10th grade, like adding, subtracting, up killing until the, it in math. If you ask me what I was 10th good grade, at. This counselor life, just shook you down? If you ask me, what are you good at? In ninth grade, I've been like math. That's my thing. After 10th grade, it shattered me, dude. I was like, I am not good at math. There's motherfuckers entering calculus. I don't even know what that is. You know what I'm saying? But the, my, my whole thought was, where in my life am I ever going to need to know calculus? You know? I think I think every kid thinks that, unless you have a call We're for We're not numbers. kids anymore, especially not super little kids. So now that we're adults, I, see, I, see what you did there. I, would, I would say we're adults. Where in your life do you see calculus fitting into your to, to the equation of your life? I think well, I think that's different. It's just like you don't need to work out; it doesn't have to be in there. But it's good to build the muscle, and the the mind is a, an amazing muscle. So, I mean, I wish I knew how to do all that stuff because I like puzzles, brain games, and shit like that. I think that that's good for your mind. But have you ever been in a situation? But math, no. Where you thought, well, that's, fuck, dude, you got I be, needed to know calculus for well, this. Well, we wouldn't have our phones without it, these microphones. I think that it's very important. I think more people should try their best to have an interest in it. But I do I think just, that I thought the same thing when I was a kid. Yeah, so you know what? Don't think like that. If you're a kid, don't think like that. That's bullshit. It's not beneficial to think like that. It's bullshit, kid. Because my whole thing was, unless you want to be a math teacher, who the hell needs to know this shit? I'm wrong, though. You're right. How could we be doing this without someone that actually paid attention to your calculus? Back to Pogs. So when I was younger... Wait, are we done? Mandelbrot? Uh, it, this is all extras. It, it might slide back into conversation. Let's, let's to be yeah. honest, man, your knowledge of the Mandelbrot, it, it was incredible. If you want to keep elaborating on it, I feel bad because I'm the one that brought it to your attention and I don't even know that much about it. Besides, well, it looks trippy, dude. You know, like, <laughs> it looks that like was acid. That was the text. Let's do Mandelbrot. Shit looks like an acid trip, bro. Yeah, I, I mean, was like, that, okay. Was, okay. that was okay. pretty much the extent let's of my see. thought. Let's see. Thinking about how to create an infinite 30 minute long conversation on it didn't cross my mind necessarily. Infinite 30 minute. That's like a band. That's like a, that's definitely 30 seconds to Mars, dude. I, I never liked that name. And then, uh, someone was talking about a story where they, you know, they were hitting the slopes, so to say, a little party, you know? Yeah. And they were like 30 seconds to Mars, bro. And I was like, oh. Changed my whole dynamic on the name. Oh, I, I used to it. think I used to think it was a terrible name, but that's actually kind of cool name now. Are they a from good that from band? that perspective? I've only heard that one song, that uh, that that one. Yeah. If you if you heard it, he just he sounds so upset. <laughs> There's one song, whatever. He's just like yelling. I mean, I, I listen to songs with screaming, but he just literally just sounds so upset the whole time. I just don't know if I like him doing music i i don't i don't know well, don't i never matter. knew him from anything but fight club when i was uh when i was younger and i don't Jared know what Leto else was in fight club yeah he was the one the, the very first dude who was like standing outside and brad pitt's like get the fuck out of here it's not gonna happen it's like the first dude to do it uh, that, i just remember from my so-called life yeah i don't i don't know it's an mtv show this is around like daria that's what's up. I remember Daria. Like the 8.30 90s? would be Daria. 9 o'clock would be my so-called life. I thought you didn't have all the specifics. 10 o'clock, Beavis and Butthead, bro. Well, I thought Daria and Beavis and Butthead were by... They were closer. I did not know that MTV, VH1, and Nickelodeon are all basically the same company. Well, I mean, these companies all have parent companies. Viacom now owns it. We're getting super far away, though, from the Pog story. I do still have the Pog story in the back pocket, man. This ain't going okay, nowhere. Okay. So, so when I was do the so when I was younger, 
Pogs, basically, for you guys that don't know about Pogs, and it's sad that we live in a time where people don't know about Pogs. It was a, it was a short fad. I can imagine most people don't know about Pogs. Yeah, I would say... Do you, do you guys know about Pogs? It, it was... Uh, no? It was okay. pre-Hacky Sack, post-Ninja Turtles. You know what I'm saying? Like, as far as my life no, hacky goes... Hacky Sack's been around forever, I dude. know, but like... It, I, it, has its, it has its jumps. It spikes again where a lot of people use it. Yeah, it was Ninja like... Ninja Turtles. Did you know that that came from a comic book? Like I, a, a dark underground comic book? Yeah, I saw... I did not know that. I saw that recently. Toys that... Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Made us who we are. That show's cool. I love those types of shows because it's not just you're learning about the thing, but it branches. You learn so much useless knowledge, but it's cool. Did you watch the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger one? I did. But I did know that. I did know that it was... a uh, The Power Rangers was like a show from the 70s in Japan that had been around forever. Yeah. It, I, I didn't know it took that roller coaster. It's called right? like Saintai or something like that? Yeah, something like that. And but, they were called the original Power Rangers. Uh, uh, yeah. The, it was something. Right but the guy that actually wrote and uh, sung the Ninja Turtles theme song yeah. is the dude that made the Big Bang. He had a, touch, uh, a ton of other shows, too. He's like a yeah. big name. But, yeah, he's and he's singing it, too. Yeah. The Turtles in a Half Show. That's, that's Turtle Power. Fun. So, pause. Crazy. Crazy. So, when I was younger, post-Ninja Turtles, pre-Hacky Sack, uh, I got Pogs, and I got super into it. I, I don't like the post pre with the hacky sack. I'm, I'm just, just putting that in there. Do the story. <laughs> do the story. I just don't. I don't. I don't think. I just have to. Put, I have to like. It helps me remember it's things. The 90s. More. It was the nineties. It was the nineties. Early early nineties. You know. So Pogs are essentially the way that they came to fruition is underneath a gallon of milk cap. There's like a little round circular piece of paper that's like cardboard ish, mm-hmm. and in Hawaii, people would take these. They would draw on one side like an X or something like that. That would say heads or tails. They'd stack them, and then they would use quarters to try to flip them over. And if you flipped over, let's say me and you, we got a – I mean, dude, I had a tournament mat for Pogs. That's 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 going beyond the normal. I had a tournament mat. I had a lot of different – so there was Pogs, and then the, the, the quarter would later the turn out to be the Slammer. Yeah, Dude, I had Slammers. I mean, it doesn't seem like slammer a lot right now, days? but like $7, dude. For a slammer. That's a lot of money. <laughs> it was crazy. So, so many stories. I'm getting flooded with Pog stories right now. Dude. Pog memories. I shouldn't have said the post pre. It really fucked my head up. <laughs> but so basically, okay. though that that's what Pogs are for people that aren't familiar. And um, so when I was younger, I got super into it. And there was a kid down the street. Me and him would play Pogs all the time. And there's two ways to play Pogs. For fun or for keeps. For keeps, yeah. You playing for keeps? That's we serious. Usually play for keeps. Yeah, you got to play for keeps. You know, that's like having a gunfight with BB guns playing for fun. It don't make sense. You know what I mean? That was dark. It don't matter though. So it got to the point where I took all this kid's pogs because I, I had a technique. You know what I'm saying? I like, and I had a seven dollar slammer. So it was it was a bodyguard one. Probably that seven dollar slammer. Dude. It looked like the sprocket from a bike. Okay. It was pretty cool. I don't know if you ever had one of those, but I had a couple and it was pretty rad. So we had they had Street Fighter Pogs back in the day. And they were expensive. They had dude. everything Pogs. <laughs> they had Del Taco Pogs. Del Taco, but but this specifically that's were a punk band name. Del Pog. Taco Pogs. I like it. Caught, that's mine. Don't take it, dudes. Don't take it. So uh, the my buddy had some holographic Street Fighter Pogs that he just got for his birthday. Came to the pad, played it's for cool, keeps. Dude. Became my holographic street uh, fighter pogs. And his mom literally came over and uh, made me give him back. That's cold. That's not even the story, though. Oh, man. I know. You were hoping that was it. I so mean, there's a comic story. book store about a mile away from my house growing up. Right? So uh, I used to go there all the time. And I would check out the new pogs, the new slammers that they had. And I don't like bringing this up. It kind of puts me in a dark place. But I stole a lot of pogs. Okay. And slammers. What I would do is I would did say... Did you pay for that $7 slammer or did you steal that one too? I don't think I ever paid for a slammer. I was just giving you a reference of how expensive these things were getting. You know what I mean? So... Why just stop there? Well, Why you, didn't you get like a $12 slammer? Because dude? not... Well, I probably did. But once you got... Well, if well you're, you died, dude. You know how in Vegas there's the, the, the penny <laughs> slots where the common uh, yeah. folk practice losing their money? Sure. So there's also the high limit room where I've only been in once, lost 50 bucks. Not my thing. You know what I'm saying? But if you want a high limit pog, you're playing with slammers, dude. Not the pogs. 
you play with slammers as opposed to pugs and you play for keeps so once i acquired a couple slammers of course not only did i steal them but i won them so i like you know those mini m and m tubes you probably had one of those right yeah, yeah. So you kept your pogs in i had several of them full of slammers you know like i'm getting giddy thinking about it dude this is a fun time this shit went far this, this, shit this went is getting way deep. further than i it's thought getting, it would it's getting deep bro so i'll go to this i'll go to this comic book store and I would say, hey, let me check out this uh, stack of slammers. You know what I mean? Let me just look at them. And I would turn around and I would look at them and I'd find one that they only had one of. And I thought, well, there's no way they're going to know if this is gone. I don't know what the frame of like, my logic was, but I would just keep it in my hand. I was oh, here's the slammers back and then put it in my pocket. And I would do this on like a daily basis, you know, robbing them blind, dude. It wasn't even about the pogs anymore if you're doing it on a daily basis. No, because then I had a buddy. Because I was in like... Did you move from like, you know, like you move was, from slammers up is, to like baseball cards, up to comics, you know? It's like a gateway. It's a gateway theft. Well, it's hard to steal a comic. I mean, but a pog fits in the palm of your hand. I mean... Do you know I what I'm saying? Know. So what I'm getting at is... What we got here, man? We got a listener. So I would steal these slammers and then I had a buddy, right? The, I went to Catholic school. I was like in third, fourth grade. He was in seventh, eighth grade. Okay. So basically, I'd go there, and he would sell them, and we'd split profits. He would sell them to the higher up classmen because I'd get pretty exclusive slammers, bro. I mean, this you is a, a slammer exclusive. Like people knew me as well; they probably knew him, but they didn't know I was the guy behind the guy. So you had slammer exclusivity I was like and connections. The pog cartel, you know what I mean? Pog the slammer, the 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 slartel. I had all these slammers. So every day we meet up and they'd be like, "Oh, what you got today, bro?" I'm like, "Oh, dude, I got the body glove. I got this the went Wolverine." Way deeper than, uh, just so I have a pog story. Just, dude, you this had like is... a pog empire. Yes, but what no. happened to all these pogs? What's is that, there a that's... downfall? Yeah. So did you get slammed eventually after the commercial break? You know what I'm saying? But no. So yeah, there there, there was definitely ups and downs in my pog world. But so I would steal them religiously, and I would go it to went school from a little bit to like not. <laughs> Then I would sell them at school. That's really funny. You know, I, I probably had one with the Mandelbrot on it. That's how it ties in. So I would sell them at school and I would keep them because you'd play at school. And at one point, actually, they outlawed it in schools. They're like, nah, we don't want kids playing Remember for they keeps. Did that with yo-yos too? No yo-yos. Yo-yos are dangerous though, bro. On the wrong hands. I've seen motherfuckers knock themselves out. Sorry, bro, no, <laughs> I've actually sorry, never bro, seen no, just... anybody knock themselves out of the yo-yo, but I'm sure it's happened. And you could probably knock out other people with the yo-yo. Well, they had like at one school they had an assembly. This dude came with yo-yos doing all the tricks and shit. I was in third grade. And I don't know. He just went from school to school selling these, I guess. And I don't know why this school thought this was okay. But so this dude does like a demonstration of walking the dog and all that shit. And then everybody, every kid obviously is buying a yo-yo now. Birdcage? So, so dude, he did the, 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 isn't it the swinging baby thing? I was known as bird in a cage. Okay. It sounds like uh, we're talking about the same thing anyway. And so here's the deal. Every, every kid buys one because the school had this man do an assembly and then we were told we couldn't bring him to school because gave, I guess too many kids were bringing him to school. He gave you false dreams. Like you too could be a yo-yo Bullshit. professional. Bullshit. Duncan was the brand. So we only sure. got two minutes. Let's, let's get that pog story. Yeah. So it's going to be hard to condense it. Two but, months, bro. So one time I went to the comic book store, me and my buddy, his name was Sean. Ratting him out. That's and cool. you know, dude, where are you at these days, Sean? So I was stealing pogs. Of course I had a couple and then we walked out of the comic book store, and maybe like 10 steps later, I hear, wee, wee, wee. I like, what the fuck is that? Is that a that? baby? Or is it the cops? Nah, dude, it's the alarm going off because some kid ratted me out that saw me swooping on pogs. Some random kid? Some random. I don't What's fucking up with know. That, dude? I mean, it's like, dude, I would have hooked you up, man. You don't got to rat on me, that, bro. Dude? I mean, if it's not affecting you. I would have played you for keeps. You know what I'm saying? So, Shit. so while we're walking out, my buddy Sean boned out. He knew he wasn't guilty, but I knew I was guilty. So we walked in, and then she said, hey, like, we saw you steal those. So I showed them to him, and then my grandpa ended up picking me up, and my grandpa's like, oh, your parents would be so disappointed. And then I remember a story about my mom stealing something one time. So I was like, actually, I think my mom used to steal stuff too. You know, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know why I thought this is something to bring up right now to lighten my blow. But uh, on camera, that's cool. My, 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 my grandma, my grandpa was pretty pissed off. He said, that's not how we do things. He paid her the eight dollars for the pog that they knew that I stole. I had like four others that they didn't know. But I mean, you know, we paid him off for the pog that, you know, they that saw they, thought, yeah. they, they knew I stole. And uh, basically, my mom and dad made me get rid of all my pogs, which really Damn. just went upstairs to my grandma's house. 
and she kept them for me. So she was almost like the cartel secret weapon. Did you ever get them back? Or did you just kind of grow out of it? Uh, I don't know what happened. I think Hacky Sack did. Then Hacky Sack came? Hacky Sack came, and then uh, no one was playing Pogs anymore. You're still it, good at Hacky The sack? market... I don't know if I'm good at it, but I could definitely really kick a ball a few times. I think, I think it's about to tap out on us. But but the moral of the story is, or not the moral, that's a weird thing. But yeah, so I don't know what happened with all the Pogs, but that's the Pog story. I don't know if it has an ending or not definitively, but I got well, that, caught. That, that's the thing is it, it never ends, but it's we just infinite. have to stop it because the video can only be so long. It's just like the Mandelbrot. <sighs> it all ties into it. But yeah, don't steal. Um, and at the end of the day, you know... Yeah, buy your, we should bring Pogs back. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna play Pogs, pay for them. Play for keeps. Pay for them too. I think Don't I'm gonna them. make a shirt that says, "I only play for keeps." Are you gonna put Pogs on it anywhere? Or are you just mentioning. The I want it to be one of those things where the no, no, you know what I mean, where someone's gonna walk up like, "Bro, is that a Pog reference?" I don't like, think I'm so. Sure it's like but yeah, it's a Pog reference, dude. Yeah. All right, just redo it so we could do an ending to this. I had more, but dude, we don't need to keep talking. Yeah, about when we brought up Hacky Sack, I thought, please don't start a story on Hacky Sack. Gesturing at 21? Remember that? No. You get to 21 and you do the whole like, dude, and you like, dude, like, you put behind your leg. I was not able to do all that shit. Yeah. I could keep it up, but I, I wasn't up with the tricks. Are we on? Yeah. Okay, so. That Ran was a, a really good episode uh, with the Pog stories, too. But so Mandelbrot, we got Pogs, a uh, little bit of Ninja Turtle, uh, Power would, Ranger. Not the turtles. That was, it's in there. That was for, like 12 seconds. For SEO purposes, we might as well. It's a Ninja Turtle episode, too. You know what I mean? But yeah, so more. I would be pissed if I clicked on it because of that. Like clickbait, <laughs> thinking that there's some Ninja Turtle talk. And then and then going through it, that's it. It's just that like little. <laughs> Hey, did you know it was a comic book? I did. Oh, okay, okay. Let me move on. It's, <laughs> bro, you'll never hear this. Okay. We mentioned it, bro. It was it's mentioned. I don't know. So, yeah. Basically, uh, I might make a shirt that says, I play for keeps. Now you guys know what the shirt would be about. It's I super think the cool. camera clicked off during that part, play for keeps. That's what... Did it? It might have. Well, I mean, it was initial, off when she, when she went to turn off the camera. The initial Pog story? Uh, well, I mean, at the end, when you were talking about the shirt, I don't think that, that made it on film. But, hey. It's been a great opener for season three. Season three. It was a potpourri of topics. Of course, Ninja Turtles was sprinkled in there a little bit, right? <laughs> There's just one. <laughs> one but how could there be a more crucial bit of information we could have given you? It, it it tied it up. It was the bow on the Mandelbrot conversation. So anyway, we appreciate you stopping by. And uh, we'll see you on the, uh, the next episode. Boom.